The objective of a deep learning model is to transform some input x to an output y. Often you will see a probabilistic definition of deep learning models where you can view the output y conforming to a probability distribution conditional on the input x and the model parameters theta. However, today we are only concerned with the architecture of the deep learning model that takes us from the input to the output. The specific architecture we are looking at is a deep neural net. Before we dive into the details of it, let's ask ourselves, but why is the deep neural net DNN architecture so widely used? Well, apparently, the DNN is inspired by the structure of the neurons in the human brain. The human brain is able to effectively solve a range of complex problems. So the hope is that by using the structure in the brain, we too can artificially solve similarly complex tasks. Now let's understand how a DNN works. Let's define a dummy task for which we want to build a deep learning model. Let's say we have some financial data for a country, UK over here, and want to use a deep learning model that takes this data as an input and predicts, let's say, the life expectancy of people in the country. However, we want the model to be trained well enough to be able to generalize to many countries so we can predict their life expectancies too, China, Brazil, and so forth for a high range of countries. And I think that's probably getting the point now. So how do we go about using a deep neural net to do this? We define every input as a feature vector x, where each element represents different pieces of information. The example here is for Kiribati. The first element gives the gross domestic product, the second the gross national income, and so forth. We could, of course, select more features, but we shall restrict ourselves to four for this example. We then define each element of a vector as a node, denoted x1, x2, x3, and x4 here. We then also define another node, h1, where its value can be determined from our x nodes. Specifically, we can show how it is calculated visually by drawing some lines, which tell us that h1 is a linear weighted sum of the inputs x1 to x4, with the respective weights being a11, a12, a13, and a14. We can repeat this for nodes h2 and h3, so that we have a set of three linear equations. We can combine this into a single matrix equation and then simply write it as the vector h is equal to the matrix A times the input vector x. However, in reality, h is equal to a function of ax, where the function is a non-linearity known as an activation function. Typical common examples of activation functions are the ReLU, a rectified linear unit, and the hyperbolic tan function. Each activation function has its own advantages, and they are often chosen carefully for the task at hand. We will denote the specific activation function used here as f1. Also note, we call h the hidden layer. We can now go on to compute y, which, if you recall, is to represent the life expectancy. Using the same structure and weights defined via matrix B, the output Y is an activation function, F2 of BH. We can then go on to write the overall function as shown. Now, all that is left to do is to choose the values of A and B, i.e. the elements of these matrices, so that the model accurately predicts or outputs life expectancy Y. The selection of the parameters A and B is what is known as training of the deep model. So over here we have shown how to use a deep neural net architecture to transform an input to an output. 
The deep neural net here can easily be made deeper by adding more hidden layers, or wider by having more hidden nodes in each hidden layer. In both cases, this would mean there are more parameters, i.e. elements of the weighting matrices, that have to be optimized during the training. And that is all there is to the essence of a deep neural net.